Hey, 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 what is going on? You are watching and of course listening to Tags Live, aka Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition where we are here every Wednesday night on the Crowdcast platform. This is episode 507. I am your host, Stevie, alongside my partner in crime, Cody Marie Stolget. How the hell are you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. I'm doing wonderful. The tits are sitting. We got a guest. We are going to have a great show today. Absolutely. Your mic is set, I assume. And you're yeah. right. We are uh, our special guest who's going to be coming on a little bit later in the show. Tommy Alexander is going to be talking about OnlyFans. His, he's going to be joining us on the Vakaya Resort the red light district and so much more can't wait to get into this but cody can we yes. get into Oktoberfest and how we are starting with tonight we've got special guests the entire month how exciting yes. is that? it's great you know what it's not spooky at all and october is supposed to be a spooky time but this is amazing i can't wait to have all these guests on so we can get them out to the people. We can have these wonderful conversations. It's going to be so electric. So Oktoberfest, like here we are, babies. Okay. Well, I couldn't help but acknowledge that I was asked to be on a Gay Cities interview with Matt Wexler. And you can see it. It's out right now. And the whole interview was interviewing me about sex progressive travel. Everything from packing, how you navigate with your boo, how you find Ooh. boos, how you navigate oh. what you may want on that special trip. We just wanted to play a little clip. The interview is out right now and uh, let's just play it. Yeah, let's go. The, the first would be traveling with a partner. Um, and I'm sure you've had so many conversations with guests and whatnot about uh, about what that looks like. Maybe if you're not typically in an open relationship, but maybe you're sort of ha having fun, sort of what that might be, is how to open the doorway to those conversations and navigate that so you are able to manage expectations before you get off the plane. Yeah, again, we talk a lot about this on the show, communication, 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 plan ahead, have those conversations before you get on the plane because it's only going to save yourself stress, drama. You don't want to be fighting on your destination that you've been planning for so long. And I think it's a great opportunity to explore your sex positivity with your partner on a vacation, as long as you plan. That was so good, Steve. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a it really fun... So sexy. Thank Beautiful. you. That is on Gay Cities right now. It just dropped today, and I love doing that interview. It was so cool. We really dive deep into packing, how to explore your sexuality when you go on some of these trips that should be really mm -hmm. fun, and there really should be no drama. So I oh, encourage yeah. people to check it out. It's out right now. You can go to tagspodcast.com. I'll post it for episode 507 so you can find the link there. Also, in uh -huh. new news, we oh. have, Cody and I have a brand new podcast that is going to be dropping Wednesday, October 18th. And the show is, you want to say what it is, Cody? I do. It's called Of a Certain Age, and it's about growing older and doing it, living out loud and living your life to the fullest, no matter what age you are. So I'm going to put the, the artwork up here right now. We're so excited. We've been working on this for the last, all summer long, we've been working on this. We've been recording so many episodes with special guests, everything from fitness experts to supplement people that know how to keep ourselves young with supplements to travel experts to mental health experts to if you've thought maybe your career was going one way but you needed to pivot what if you find yourself older and you know you don't know what to do we talked to somebody from sage on yep. and on and on to your face how to take care of your face Ooh, that we have fun. an expert on that so many really worthwhile conversations that 
we cannot wait to bring to you. It all drops October 18th. So you're going to get three shows from us, but it'll have its own life on its own. It's going to be called Of a Certain Age. Like Cody said, living mm -hmm. out loud. How can people start to follow us? Because we're two weeks out from today, Cody. How excited are you? And how could people follow the new show in advance? I am so excited. It's going to be so amazing. I'm so proud of the inclusivity and the thought provoking topics that we have come up with, the people that we have spoken to, such a wide array of people. And it's just so, it's so good. It's so fulfilling, this work that we're doing. So I can't wait for everybody to hear about it. Everybody can follow us on Instagram um, on of a certain age pod. I put the Instagram link in the chat. So if you guys want to go and follow us right now, please feel free to do so. Also, when the podcast comes out, just like with this podcast, feel free to like us on Apple, uh, Apple Podcasts. Give us five stars and leave a review. It would do so much for our podcast. We love That's it. Right. Of a certain age pod, P-O-D and one last thing to say on this that's really exciting is the theme song. We oh. can give you a little bit. The theme you did not tell me you were going to do it. <laughs> is going to be sung by our one and only Cody Maurice Doggett. And it sounds yes. really good. I love oh. the song. And I think it's so inspirational. So lots to look out for. Of a certain age, dropping Wednesday, October 18th. Wherever you get your podcast, we'll continue to promote it, but follow us on our brand new Instagram account of a certain age pod, P-O-D, and we're going to give you some behind the scenes so you kind of know a little bit more on where we're going with this, but mm -hmm. I think you get the picture and join us. So thank you for that. That's right. Oh, okay. that was so sweet. Steve, you surprised me with that. Not know we were going to announce that tonight. I love <laughs> like, giving surprises. So, <laughs> well, we've got to move on. And, you know, one thing that we love is a good follow up story. And on episode 506, we were talking about OnlyFans creator, porn star Logan Ahrens, who shared his testicular cancer diagnosis. And recently, he actually does have. Uh, testicular cancer he said the so the results are in and it's confirmed it was seminoma testicular cancer the doc said we caught it early and i may not need chemo or radiation but that means that i have to get to the ct of my abdomen and pelvis and that's scheduled soon to see if it has spread to my lymph nodes and organs. And then once wow. we get the results from that, we determine what stage and treatment we'll need. The plus side is it's extremely treatable and has a very high survival rate. And as we said, Cody, on episode 506, I really applaud him for putting this out there. And like you said, people need to check themselves. And mm -hmm. it often occurs in men that are younger. I'm not talking like 20s, 30s, he's younger, young man. Mm -hmm. And, but everybody, like you said, should be test, like checking themselves, talking yes. to your doctors. We talk about it so much. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm just glad that he finally has a pathway to some resolution with this. And I'm praying for him and, to heal quickly and to, to make it through to the other side. I'm glad that you brought up that people need to be checking themselves because everybody needs to be checking themselves. I know that it's mainly for younger people, but please just do your due diligence because your health is the most important thing. It really is. Yeah. That's one thing that I talk about on the interview with Gay Cities mm -hmm. is well, you probably put that link in there too. Now that I'm thinking oh, about yeah. it, people, can watching us live watch it check it out gay cities but yeah absolutely i think he's doing really good and we wish him really well logan aaron absolutely yes rupaul switching gears oh up mama Ru? memoir that i am so excited i really want to read it and he gave an emotional announcement, RuPaul, announcing the titled House of Hidden Meetings. Did you see the cover art for it? Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I'm like, and Mama Ru looks like a man, a whole man. Okay. <laughs> I love RuPaul. He took to social media to announce the upcoming new memoir 
the house of hidden meanings and he gave a very emotional video of the book and yeah. it's set to come out next year march 5th 2024 i can't wait it's gonna be my spring summer read but he made the announcement in a video today quote after two and a half years it's finally here my memoir i'm so excited and so anxious he said at the same time because i really reveal so much of uh, myself shouldn't he have said reveal you know um, this world <laughs> okay <laughs> you know this world today feels so hostile and is such a scary place to be vulnerable but i did it so get ready and i watched that video of him mm -hmm. and you really got the feeling that he is bare bonesing it on this in this book and he's going to be giving us stories that maybe he didn't even feel comfortable several years ago expressing to everybody but you know Rubal has the stories and there is a reason why he is at the top of his game where he's at, but I think it's gonna be very vulnerable. It's gonna be like a lot of things, express a lot of things that maybe for him could be cringe at times, but uh -huh. for so many of us is gonna be enlightening and give us life. And first of all, what do you think on that? And then I just wanted to quickly talk about revealing, revealing yourself. Well, you know, I love RuPaul and Drag Race and everything having to do with the Drag Race and Drag Queens. And you know that RuPaul has lived a whole life. Like, he, they have done so much in their lives and they have experienced so many different things and so many different eras. So I think that this, is, this book is going to be, like you said, my spring, summer read. It's going to be so enlightening. RuPaul has said so many things, not only on Drag Race, but in life to prove that they've really done the work as far as making themselves a whole person or a more evolved person. And I just can't wait to read it. It's just going to be so I'm going to, I know I'm going to cry and I'm going to laugh because it's Mama Ru. And yeah, it's just going to be so great. I, I'm so excited for this book. I think it's going to be a celebration, but I also think it's going to be some stories where it's in his words. There's some, been some recent stories of him coming out where he's done some reporting back in the day. Of, mm -hmm. He did this one thing where I forget it was the 90s and he was on the streets of the meatpacking district oh, yeah, talking to trans hookers, if yes. you will. And people kind of accused him of maybe glorifying that whole and exploiting world and exploiting it. Mm -hmm. I'd be curious to, you know, it takes a lot to get to the top, to get to his level where he is at iconic status. And sometimes people feel a little left behind. Sometimes people feel a little afraid on the ends. And I'm just wondering how much he's going to share in this book, but it sounds like, He's going to be revealing a lot. A and lot. <laughs> it gets me thinking, too, you know, just to relate it to our show in our mm -hmm. small little way. People have told us, my friend the other day was telling me, he's like, wow, you really share a lot on your show about your inner life and what's going on with you. And he asked me that. I said, well, we, we know that this show is not going to be successful if we don't really reveal and share stories that are personal to us. Mm -hmm. No audience member is going to want to listen to us if we just relayed the hot topics of the week. We've got to really share our personal stories. And we've got, we're real people behind these voices here. That's we right. are living a life. When we turn this mic off, we are going out there. We're having sexcapades. We are having relationships. And we are putting our vulnerable selves out there. And so I think that... I can relate to what he is saying. I often don't re-listen to the playback, even though I edit these shows. Mm -hmm. I often, we do a good job that we don't have to edit a lot, but what do you yeah. feel really quickly? No, I definitely hear you. I actually was planning on not sharing as much, but now that you say that it's the key to success, I'm going to have to, I guess. <laughs> um, but I definitely agree with you. Just being on this format and really being able to connect with people, I feel like the more that you share of yourself, the more you are able to help more people go through similar situations that you're going through. So 
And that is how I look at it. That's why I'm so giving with my story and who I am. Of course, I keep some things for myself, of course, because you, you always got to make have yeah. that little bit of balance. But I do think that the more you share and the more you are giving of who you are, the better off the world will be personally. So yeah, I'm glad RuPaul is doing this because I want to learn from their experiences. We are live and we have time for one more topic, but we are in live in front of a virtual audience. And Bryce says, DB, is this the new podcast talking about of a certain age coming out October 13th? foreshadowing of your future book it is in many ways Ooh. absolutely but you know this is really cody's and mine project separately that oh, baby we have been working on like i said all summer long and so um it's mostly about that and our experiences um we'll get to the book later but yeah it's, it's mm. mostly about that so yeah can't wait yeah. Uh, let's get into this story before we bring on our special guest. He might Perfect. have something to say about it. And we're talking about, we talked about it already, Doxy Pep, a.k.a. <laughs> the Gay Morning After Pill. And it's set to get its CDC stamp of approval preventing STIs, where gay and bi men who've been exposed to STIs during unprotected sex have an over-the-counter option for the morning after. And it's about to get the CDC stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. And we did talk about DoxyPep before. It looks like it's getting it. I know our guest may have something to talk about because I saw in his social media, he's already promoting something for this. The inexpensive antibiotic has already been successful in preventing infections in San Francisco, where subjects who used it were nearly 90% less likely to get things like chlamydia, around 80% less likely to contract syphilis, and more than 50% less likely to get gonorrhea. There's potential side effects, but like headaches, nausea, and skin sen sensitivity, but in general, there's really not much. And... Mm -hmm. I think this is really good. We may want to get on this before we go to or when we're done with our Nakaya <laughs> Mexico resort in Puerto Vallarta with that we gotta stock up. district. But <laughs> I think we're gonna be um what are your thoughts on this that it's moving so fastly forward? Because I do think there's a need for this at this point in time. I could not agree more. I think that anything that we can do as far as public health and safety, we need to be making those steps, especially in the age where in Texas and places like that, they are trying to outlaw things like PrEP and things of that nature. So I am here for DoxyPep as long as it's used wisely and safely and, and you know, and, but under a doctor's orders and things of that nature. I, I'm totally here for it. Like you said, we need to probably stock up before we go to Mexico because <clears throat> we're, I plan on having some wild, wild times there. So I don't know about you. I do. And a lot of it stems from this article. I'll post this on tagspodcast.com. It looks like they're advancing it based on the San Francisco study. There's a couple of programs that are already out there. We'll ask mm -hmm. our special guest that he's involved with one. But the other thing to consider is you are taking an antibiotic, but you may be preventing uh, getting some of these STIs and continuously, what my doctor says, putting them back into the system. And that's mm -hmm. something that we don't want to do is we don't want to just keep passing these along. And if I've said this on the show before, we are at a stage where everybody, nobody should really be getting HIV at this point in the game. Mm -hmm. However, the reality is we are all having sex and most of us, 90%, 99% of us probably aren't using condoms. That's just the reality. Sorry, that's just yeah. the reality. And so what that means right now is no, less HIV, hopefully moving to a zero percentile, but we are getting STIs. This can combat that, at least the beginning stages of that. So I think it's great. And let's continue to talk about this. Um, did you want more more comment before we bring our... Oleg says in the comments that they've been on DoxyPep and it's easy to use and available in New York City. So there we go. I love it. I love well, that. 
It's time to bring up our special guest to the show. And we are welcoming Tommy Alexander to the show. Welcome, Tommy. How you doing? There we go. Can we hear me? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> right, thank you for having me, guys. How are you guys? Really good, really good. You're Thanks for great. joining the show. So we, we are excited because you're going to be actually joining us in Puerto Vallarta, October 29th for the yes. upcoming Vacaya Mexico Resort in Puerto Vallarta, October 29th through November 5th, all by Vacaya. It's going to be really exciting. How excited are you? I'm super excited. I have never been on one of their trips before, but they look mm -hmm. amazing. Um, I literally went to a hotel, or it was a pool party that they hosted during LA Pride okay. and ran into the owner and he was like, oh, I know you from online. Like we hit it off for a little bit and he was like, would you be interested in promoting for us? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then hopped on a Zoom call like a few days later and he was like, you're hired. Let's do it. <laughs> so I I'm it. super excited to actually go on my first trip with them. Um, it sounds like it's a really sex positive company. It's just a lot of fun. So kind of curious Absolutely. to see. Well, Tommy is a social media influencer. We'll get into that. You are an OnlyFans sensation. Um, <laughs> before we get into all of what you do and all that good stuff, you were supposed to be on this show uh, last month. And you were in a very serious accident, um, very yeah. serious car accident. What can you tell us? How are you doing? And let us know. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was a gnarly car crash. There were six cars involved. Um, it happened at like 12.15 in the morning, driving back from dinner in a different town with three friends in my car. Or sorry, two friends that were still in the car. One had just been dropped off. Um and a car came and hit us from behind on the freeway. Oh and we goodness. went out. And then we were stopped in the middle of the road. We're all kind of checking on each other. Are you okay? Are you okay? And then all of a sudden, another car slams into us on the passenger side going 65. Um, and then another car slammed into us. And then we finally ended up hitting the, uh, the, the guardrail. Mm -hmm. um, so very lucky to be alive like looking at the car is just like mind-blowing like how did we survive that but i have a fractured pelvis my boyfriend has three fractured vertebrae and a broken hand and our other friend just walked away bruised luckily um and nobody involved in the other cars died or anything like that thank god okay uh, i think there's maybe one other person who had more severe injuries than we did from what i understand but um still haven't really figured that all out yet but yeah, sorry I didn't sorry I had to miss it. Not at no. all. No. Yeah, we're just happy you're safe. Yeah. Yes. Cody, do you want to ask him? We're just gonna round robin these questions. Yes, yes. I'm glad you're doing well. I'm glad you're doing you are doing better now, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely improving fast. I'm, I'm able to walk around without crutches now. Okay. Um, it's not the most comfortable, but my physical therapist said the more I can be up on my feet, the better. Uh, made it back to the gym today for the first time since oh, the good. crash. Just doing upper body and hit actually, that cold pump. And actually, Cody, before you go, mm -hmm. uh, before you ask your question, you know, we were just reporting on an OnlyFans creator as well, Logan Aaron, who had testicular cancer, and he had posted this whole thing about how it's really affected his work and has yeah. a GoFundMe. Has this affected your work as an OnlyFans creator? And it I definitely also, has. Yeah, let us know. Yeah, it has. I mean, mainly because there was like a, a couple week period there where I really wasn't able to make the same kind of content that I usually make on TikTok and Instagram reels, mm -hmm. which really is the main driver to my OnlyFans. Like that's what drives traffic there more, a lot more so than Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I'm I'm one of those creators that started Instagram and TikTok and stuff first, and then just was like, hmm, maybe I'll try OnlyFans. A lot of these other gay creators seem to have it, and then quit my job two months later because I didn't realize you could do pretty well on that platform if you have a huge exposure on social media. Uh, but yeah, so it's affected it, but I get a really high resubscribe rate because I don't like upcharge and use paywalls and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it hasn't been terrible. And I didn't do the, the GoFundMe or anything like that. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm still making okay money. So I'm just writing it out. It's just, it's a little dip, but it'll come right back. It's already starting to. Yeah, that's wonderful. I'm glad you're doing better. And 
I am glad that your OnlyFans career is skyrocketing. And you told Thank us a you. little bit about you're welcome. You you told us a little bit about how you got into it. What was it just from you uh, wanting to explore that area? What made you really get into OnlyFans? Yeah, you know, I'm really comfortable with my sexuality. I'm just really confident mm-hmm. with that. I'm not. I, um, I'm not afraid about being naked in front of other people. We have a mm-hmm. nude beach in my town in Santa Barbara, California. Um, so I was used to going down there and stuff. Um, and I started social media. I blew up on TikTok, like literally started TikTok as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> my ex-boyfriend was scrolling on, the, or sorry, ex-husband was scrolling Ooh. on TikTok. Oh, really nuts. <laughs> I'd hear the same 10 second audios on repeat, right? Like, and I was like, I'm going to download TikTok just to get more followers than you. Like, just, just banish me for fun. <laughs> And he was like, you don't know how to make content. You're not going to be able to get followers, you millennial. And I was like, watch me. And then, <laughs> to my so I didn't think I'd be able to anyways, but either. But to my surprise, I had like 15,000 followers in the first two weeks. And it's kind of just been blowing up from there. And then about two months later, I decided like, okay, let's, let's see how OnlyFans goes. I, I just noticed that a lot of the other gay creators had that. Mm-hmm. So I started an OnlyFans account. Um, and then ended up making more money there like my third month than I did the entire year before that. So I was like, okay, I'm just doing this now. Let me ask this because it seems like the ones that do really well that are successful at it have a great combination of OnlyFans content, but social media presence. And you have a whole thing on social media. You have funny videos on there you whether you're in the gym or you're at your house or you're documenting day-to-day lives you have this fun balance and it seems like you've gotten sponsorship from you know we were just talking about doxy pap and mm-hmm. i saw one of your recent um is all about getting a version is it wisp i had it here somewhere yeah, that's wisp. yeah so Talk a little bit about the combination and what you think makes a successful creator. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's so many different ways to do it. Um, I'm aware that I am an attractive guy, have a lot of privilege, um, but I'm not at the level that like I can just stand in front of the camera and get millions of views by just looking drop dead gorgeous and having a shredded six pack and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would love to be. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing okay, though. So I mean, I'm not complaining. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I think that the most success- successful OnlyFans creators has something more to offer than just sex. I think that people are really drawn to a personality. They're drawn to, you know, good vibes. Um, is this person actually trying to give something back? Or are they literally just here to milk cash from their viewers? Yeah. Like, so I personally try to not focus too much on like just what's going to drive traffic to my only fans just what's going to make me money um i i more try to focus on like what do i want to create what do i want to put out into the world like before all of this i was a i was selling my oil paintings i'm an artist mm-hmm. uh, so this is kind of just my current creative outlet and like like doing social media stuff and doing only fans is just a way to monetize that for me and i just mm-hmm. have no qual with that that's beautiful. I love that. I want to buy an oil painting, number one. <laughs> I <crush it. laughs> All right, baby. <laughs> I'll look you up. Fabulous, fabulous. Um, so what is your advice for people starting up in OnlyFans? Like just starting out, if you can think yeah. back to that. I mean, me personally, I have definitely thought about it, but it yeah. just seems so daunting. What is your advice for people? Oh my gosh. So uh, people ask me this all the time. <laughs> to- <laughs> To be real with you guys, the thing, what I tell them is I'm like, don't start OnlyFans. Like, start TikTok, start Instagram, see if you can be getting tens of thousands of views or hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of views on pretty much everything you post. And if you're not getting at least tens of thousands of views, like, don't bother. And like, okay. there's no reason to like put your news out there online unless you just really don't care. It's, you know, it's I mean, a personal okay. choice. But like, <laughs> Like, there's really no reason to put your news out there online if you're not going to be making a fair amount of money off of it, in my opinion. Okay. Um, So I kind of say, like, start that first and see how that goes and see if you like it. See if if you like trying to put that much work into getting that many views. 
Because that's where 95% of your work is going to go. Like okay. 5% of it's probably going to go into the OnlyFans side. And the other 95% is basically marketing and outreach. Yeah. Wow. So test, I love it. Test the waters. See if this is something that you can be consistent with and yeah. what response you're going to get. I love that. Really great advice. We do this with the show all the time. We're always yeah. pivoting and trying new things. Uh, yeah. We, and absolutely, we definitely have to talk because we can't meet, wait to meet you in person. I in, know. I know. And one of the things, it's going to be at the Vacaya Mexico Resort in Puerto Vallarta, October 29th through November 5th. First off question on that is, are you bringing your boyfriend Tyler with you? <laughs> More questions on that to come. And number two, will you, will you be filming content there? And number three, are you all healed up? Um, I will be all healed up by then. So we'll, let's work backwards. Yeah, let's work backwards. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I will be all healed up by then, yes. Um, I am definitely planning on filming some content there. Um, to what extent, I don't know. I'm going to see who else is around, if people want to collaborate, or if we're just going to Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Listening audience, Cody and I were raising our hands, and I'm sure we were put to the back of the line, but hey, whatever. Let's do it. I mean, I, I may have bought a mask, so it's sitting there. You there you go. Oh, yeah. I find about half the people want, that do not want their face to be involved, and I'm used to working around that, so. Okay. We can do it. We can make it happen, okay? okay. Well, what, one of the things that they have that I've experienced already being on Vakaya on earlier this year on the Caribbean cruise and the inaugural cruise that went to the Caribbean was a thing called the Red Light District. And I've seen That's... it evolve from the inaugural cruise to what it is today. And now they pipe in music. On this particular excursion that we're all going to be on, it's going to be on land. It's going to be in a resort in Puerto Vallarta. But one of the things that they're going to be doing is tendering out us to a boat. And it's a two-story boat. It's going to be... Clothing optional if you want it, and music, and it's going to be a labyrinth of hot fun, but you could also just view. What's your expectations of the Red Light District, and how important do you think something like this is for, good for travel? Um, You know, I actually am still a little curious about what the Red Light District is going to be like. The, the impression I get is that it's going to be kind of like a, a little higher end version of your typical kind of dark room vibe, right? A little bougie, maybe. <laughs> a little bougie, which sounds great to me. Like, um, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of really free spirited people who are just open to having fun and exploring, and and that there's not going to be any pressure to do anything that you don't want to do. Like, I, yeah. I'm, you know, surprisingly newer to being to experiencing dark rooms um and i kind of thought like you'd go in there and it was like you you basically have to get involved or something like that mm -hmm. and the first time i checked one out i just kind of walked around and like checked out the vibe and was and you know ran out after about five minutes and then i had to ease myself into that and i i think that the kaya from what i've heard it sounds like they're very opening to people of all different experience levels with yeah. with the red light district. And, you know, they have their ground rules, which I really like too. Like, right. um, they, like they literally have a set of rules of like do's and don'ts. What's, what's okay. What's not okay. Um, consent being really important. Wow. And yeah. I really like that about that because I've been in dark room situations where that's not the case at all. And you're kind of, doing something with the guy and then all of a sudden like you close your eyes and there's like guys trying to like jump right in while you're not yeah. even and I kind of I find that a little bit jarring personally so um I yeah I like that there's it's a free space and it's a safe space to explore to your comfort zone is that, that. that true to what yeah. you guys have experienced? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, th I think for me, since I've been on it, I think it's, um, you stated it so perfectly well in that 
you know, a lot of people have, you know, they're not used to going to spaces like this and they're creating an opportunity for sex positivity. And whether that means that you are a voyeur to the whole experience, finding your nerve when to participate. Yeah. If you do participate, it's good, but always know things about consent. And I just think it adds a new layer to what we think about travel. I mean, Cody, your thoughts on... I cannot wait. I am right there with you. I cannot wait to go, Tommy. I I'm going to be me and you go to be bosom buddies. I feel like we're going to be going into the red light district. <laughs> I can't wait for the red light districts. And I feel like I just want to ask you what other activities are you looking forward to on the Vakaya cruise? I mean, um, the, the resort. Resort. Yes, the resort. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to the theme parties. Okay. Um, yes. Oh. Party girl. <laughs> and it falls on Halloween, so. The what's that? It falls on Halloween, so. Oh, yeah. Do you want to divulge anything yet, or is it a surprise? About what I'm going to wear? Yes. Oh, you know, I actually haven't even decided yet. I have. I what? have a whole. I have a whole trunk over here of costumes. Oh. Like, I have costumes upstairs. I have like beaded chest plates of pearls that I like to wear. I, like, I, I love a theme party. I I'm love, to live. Love, love costumes. So I'm, yeah, I haven't decided. Okay. What about you? Uh, we've decided on ours, but we've I don't decided. Think we're telling, are we telling ours? We're going to hold on. We'll tell you after, Tommy. <laughs> okay. One thing we have to ask you, Tommy, is that it seemed like I was following you on social media and you it seems like you've met your match. It seems like you've met your boyfriend, Tyler, and he is the one. And you did some really good social media on recently on documenting on how you've gone on dates. And I can totally relate to him where the date was just not panning out. And I'm a romantic at heart as well. And I could relate to what you were talking about in, in a lot of that social media. Um, they just weren't panning out or they just yeah. wasn't... And there was something about Tyler, who is, was in that accident with you, is recovering with you as well, that somehow made the cut. What can you tell us just a little bit about finding the one, and what was it about Tyler that was different from all those other ones that sure. weren't making it? Well, I'll say, first of all, that like um, having my ex-husband leave me, actually, about okay. five years ago, um, which is a whole nother long story. We're bringing um, you back. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll circle back. But, Perfect. Uh, that has really, I, I learned so much from that about what I want in a partner. Um, and I've actually become far more picky about what I'm looking for in a partner since then. Not, not about looks, but about like how we, how our energies connect, mm -hmm. you know, how well do we mesh together? How well do we vibe together? You know what I mean? Um, and I pick up on people's energies like that, like all my, all my friends know that about me. Um, you know, every now and then I'm wrong, <laughs> but yeah, of course. it's true. Yeah. It's pretty fast though. And I, when I first met Tyler, it was actually at a, um, sex party. Oh, um, I, <laughs> I mean, what a, what better place to yeah. be, right? <laughs> it gives me hope. <laughs> Let me just say that. <laughs> So random, like you never expect to meet your boyfriend or something like that. But we met there and we just vibed so well. We hung out the whole night together. He was kind of like, oh my God, I hope I'm not following you around too much. Tell me if I'm bugging you. And I was like, no, please follow me around. Like I love hanging out with you. Um, so I think, I think we left that party at about 7.30 in the morning. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's amazing. And I invited him up for a date the next week, and he came up here on Friday. We went to the beach together. He hung out, got to meet my puppies, um, and we really, really connected well on that level, too, one-on-one -on -one, in the middle of the day, not partying, um, that which was super important to me, and, and yeah. he ended up spending the entire weekend. Um, that had never happened before. Like, wow. we just... It was really like this instant connection with us. It's amazing. And I've been on so many dates since, even even with one other one that I had met at a party like that, but also just from Tinder and and friends of friends and all different ways. But um, nobody had nobody had really 
you know, made it from like, oh, I, I think I might like you. Like, I think we might work well together. And then we kind of hang out in those different states of minds or different places, you know, whether we're just being chill around the house and reading books versus going out and partying or spending the day at the beach and going out to dinner. And Tyler and I just, just seem to really work well, but we've only known it's, it's I swear it's like, I, I hope this isn't offensive, but it's like, we're literally like, it's been like lesbian fast. Like we, <laughs> I've said we, that before. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. Um, but I love your honesty on that. And I think that's how so many of us operate. We meet people and it just doesn't seem to ever pan out. And yeah. I was watching so much of your social media and it seemed like you were a little bit at wit's end with finding the one. And it, you, your social media on meeting Tyler gave me hope that I can meet somebody too, like that yeah. too. Yeah. And you actually, it, it was really special when I watched it. I'm, I don't know if you thought Thank anything, you. Cody. I thought, yeah, I think that's a great story. And I'm so excited yeah. for you. Yeah, I don't know if you mentioned, will he be joining us on the Vakaya at the, at the resort? Probably not. We're, um, he's meeting with his uh, ortho surgeon um, in about a week and a half. And so mm -hmm. if she says like, oh, you know what? Like everything's healed, healing better than expected. Like it's safe for you to go do that. Then he'll come. Mm -hmm. um, if crossed. it's risky, like I don't want him to be at a party and have somebody to bump into him while he has yeah. fractured prey and then, you know, have a get way worse. So he would love to come. I would love for him to come, for, love for him to come, but it's, it's it's a question mark at this point. Safety first. And, you know, I watched a fun TikTok video of you where you're making fun, but you're essentially saying what you do for work, meaning <laughs> only fans. And you're talking yeah. to Tyler in the video. But all seriousness, all jokes aside, how does Tyler feel about what you do as an OnlyFans creator? Yeah, good question. Um, he's actually seeming really chill with it. Um, very confident with it. I'm not the type of creator that has to collaborate with other guys. I do. Mm -hmm. um, but if he didn't want me to, I wouldn't. And so oh. far, it seems like he's totally cool with me doing that. Um, it's still an open discussion at this point. And I'm really kind of um, encouraging him to really think that through. Um, see what he's comfortable with and not feel pressured to say, like, I hope he doesn't, like, you know, I say, say to him, I hope you don't think that you need to say yes to this in order to be yes. my boyfriend. Like, it's totally fine if you're not comfortable with that. Um, and then since then, we've started our own social media accounts. We've started our own joint OnlyFans hey. account. What? <laughs> so oh, it's amazing. quite possible me and him and other people maybe all we'll be collabing together, you know? <laughs> cool. Let's list that at the end. And you said you'd stick around for a little bit for a couple of hot topics. Is that yep. okay? Okay, cool. And we'll list everything that um, you want to list. Um, you know, there's been a recent TikTok trend that is finding straight guys. And I've heard it on so many shows, including The View, where straight guys apparently love talking about the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire. And I don't heard know. About yeah, you heard about that. Um, the answer, if you're a straight man, is a lot of apparently. In fact, one of the trends is uh, pop culture involves women asking their partners about the frequency in which they reflect on the famed historical period. It seems funny, but apparently a lot of straight guys are talking about the Roman Empire when they're talking amongst themselves. Well, it got a recent article asking the question, what do gay guys talk about and what's the gay equivalent? And to <laughs> preface it, I actually have been to Rome several times and my friend Daniela wrote a book called The Roman Forum, but it's been a coffee table book for the most part. In other words, I haven't really, other than been in her tours, gone through this and she's a big quizzer but other than that i don't really talk about the roman empire i'll start first on what i think gay men talk about at least from my age group and i think it's the one thing i think is a given is the aids epidemic i just think it's mm. in my repertoire i think every day when i take my vitamins and i take my truvada my prep 
I think about earlier periods where so many of my friends didn't have that luxury that didn't make it to be able to take a daily pill that could prevent HIV. And I think that's a constant for me. But Tommy, if you had to think of something besides the Roman Empire, but tell us if you're talking about the Roman Empire, what do you comes up in your mind all the time? What do we talk about? Yeah. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> no. There it is. Uh, Beyonce. <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> right um I mean, I mean honestly my first answer is probably the most accurate for people that i know with. <laughs> Dick, i love it That's, yeah no, I mean, um i love your answer too by the way um that it's actually so came good. out with me and my group as well that like we're just so privileged in this kind of new world that we're in where we get to go explore these things sexually without the same possible reper repercussions assuming we're taking prep yeah uh, yeah it's pretty amazing and, and also ridiculously sad and fucked up like what um previous generations had to go through including a lot of my friends because i have friends you know one of my best friends is 57 he said he lost half of his friends to the aids wow. epidemic it's something uh, we always think about. I think um, if you're a person of a, of a certain age, Cody. There it is. Know, there it is. But it's what are some things that you maybe think or do you even think about? Like, do you think about the Roman Empire, Cody? I don't think about the Roman Empire. And I thought that came out of nowhere. It seemed but like it came out of I nowhere. Like, who thinks about the Roman Empire? I think about I the Greek I Empire. What'd you say? What'd you say, Tom? I think I've had bad dreams about the Roman Empire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I again, think about the Super Dick. Bowl when Madonna did Dick. those men. Dick. Yeah. I think about the Greek Empire. Have you seen those memes where people are like, oh, if you lost in the in the Olympics back in the day, you had to suck off of all those? That, I would think that would be the gay equivalent of the Roman Empire. But I like yeah. your answer a lot better, Steve, because it's very <laughs> it's thought provoking. It is very <laughs> grounded. So I don't know. I, I, I'm going to go with it. yours. How about that? Okay. Winning is winning. What? Losing is winning. There you go. <laughs> well, we love giving advice on this show. And this week it comes from a Reddit thread, actually, where the person wrote, I didn't get much out of the guy on the first date, but he wants to meet again. And he says, I think I'm good. At, I'm, I think I'm a good conversationalist and a listener, but I went on a date with this guy who's 28. And while it wasn't bad drinks and appetizers, I walked away without having a good idea of who he was at the core, meaning most of his answers felt generic and somewhat short. And I asked many questions, but he wouldn't fit, fill up any and develop any answers like I was doing. Some random examples are I asked if he watches any movies or shows. He said sometimes and it died there when I approached about travels or interesting places he said he hasn't been around much and if i went the extra mile and asked that he'd like to go or places like he'd like to go all i got was maybe a national park there wasn't much to work with again everything was so generic that i was feeling tired of mining any information about him he's cute and i could see chemistry developing, but I can't paddle along for two. And he just didn't excite me. I thought he didn't have a good time or he wasn't interested, but turns out he's reaching out and asking for a second date. What? He wants advice on that. And I can't help but think of you, Tommy, and the chemistry that you had, but I'm thinking Cody and I next week have a guest on the show lamont white who's a matchmaker and says he schooled somebody cody when asked it almost in the same situation he said if if you're a guy and all you do is watch tv and pretty much work watch tv you're undateable i yes. think this guy that this guy's dating is undateable and needs to get some interest together but tell me, what would be your advice if you were dating, if you met a guy like this, he wasn't giving much, but he wanted to go on a second date. Would you fuck him? Uh, and then, uh, like, a question. <laughs> you know, I, 
You'd fuck him first, though, right, Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> Is he hot? <laughs> okay, right? <laughs> Is he tight? I don't, I don't know. Oh, no, I'm just joking. Um, I you mean, know, honestly, I, I, I have opinions and I don't want to be rude, but I feel like those aren't the questions I would be asking. Like, I feel like if somebody was asking me those questions, I'd be kind of like, oh, yeah, like, I don't know. Like, yeah, I want to travel. Oh. Like, I really feel like deep questions that I can give you really long answers oh, to. Nice or, pivot oh, there. Know. Didn't think Does of that. that. Sense? Yeah, that's Absolutely interesting. Makes sense. Yeah. No, I can, like, say maybe, I mean, and, and, and on devil's advocate with that, we're all so nervous on that first date. Like, that guy is probably so freaking nervous trying to answer those questions and so stuck in his head about, like, ah, what does this guy think about me? And, like, am I fumbling and answering these questions wrong? I feel like it can take a few times to really feel comfortable with another person to open up and and maybe ask questions back. And, you know, oh, not maybe. kind of fumble. Great insight. I mean, he's so he's, nice. Yeah. <laughs> or actually, like, Let's not take this so seriously. Yeah. L let's yeah. go on a second date and see. And if it's still generic, then fine. You have yeah, a generic have date. But I let's like that. Oh, yeah. No, I. he's very nice. I would not give that guy a second chance. I would. <laughs> I'm going to be the bitch here. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I... At first, my first thought was that he just wasn't interested and he is giving these generic a uh, answers because he wasn't invested in getting to know you more. But the fact that he asked for a second date means that you might have to continue doing the paddling like this person, like the asker said. So for me personally, I would not give them a second date because there has to be more there that I can latch on to as far as a chemistry before I go on a second date with somebody. I'm sorry. Like Tommy said, you were, he was probably nervous, but there has to be a spark in the beginning for me. That's fair. And I would probably go on the second date because I think so many people are noncommittal in general. So to even get mm -hmm. that second date, that if somebody said that, I would really see, you know, first dates are meant for, to be light, bright, and all that good stuff. Change your game the second time around and see what you get out of it a second time around. If you're still not getting anything, then leave it alone. But yeah, why not? I mean, if you find them attractive and you're into them sexually, definitely I would give them a second date. Sure. I would go on a second fuck date, not not necessarily going out date. <laughs> and lastly, I hope you play along with us as well as our viewing audience. It's called Thirst Trap. I put it in the chat line there for you, Tommy, if you can click it there. Um, basically, what we do on this, it's produced by Straight Up Gay Porn. And this week, they're asking the question, out of these 18 gay porn stars, who took the best photo of the week? You know, we could probably find you in this at some point I'm down the like, road. <laughs> and our job is to vividly describe in an audio podcast, because this gets repackaged, who we picked and why. But before we get to that, we are live. And Doug says, Cody... Doug says, I don't know that Rome is fair uh, that Rome is fairly gay. In the city of Pompeii, they found hundreds of carved penises. In fact, at one home, they found two carved penises that were three feet tall. And I would like to see that. I would like to experience that. So <laughs> yeah, here we go. So thank you, Doug. I love it. And okay. So do you want to go first, Cody, on who I can pick? go first. I think I picked my favorite. I, I don't want you to pick mine because I feel like we have the same one, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> my, okay, go. I'm going to go. Um, I picked just Jovi because not only is he absolutely gorgeous, he has the ass of death. Okay, <laughs> I can just imagine getting smothered by that ass. He's taking a picture. It's a mirror selfie in a bathroom. He's standing to the side. He has a beautiful penis. He is thicker than a sticker. And his butt is just huge. And you know, I'm an ass man. So I'm, that's who, who's getting my vote for this week. 
Whatever. And Matt goes, we'll, we'll let you have a one more take at it, Tommy, so you can see how we work with this. Mine is Eric Ray, who actually is giving a really good pose of his asshole. And it's a really good pose. I'm a big feet lover. He's got great feet. He's got great calves. I love calves. And the hole is spread. He's smooth. He's, I mean, strategically looking at the camera in this particular pose that I don't mm. know, I want to recreate it because mine won't look as good as his, but it's really well done, shadowed and all. I'm like, right, the okay, lighting. go, go yeah. Eric. I'm, in fact, I'm voting for him right now, Eric Ray, as you, all you should. But tell me, who do you pick and why? <laughs> Oh, I have to say, I like, I know a couple of these guys. <laughs> you can pick your friends. Like, like, I go to a warehouse party in LA, just Jovi's always there. <laughs> oh, I need to come but visit you. <laughs> Tell us about Jovi so you know he's <laughs> doing okay, but not grrr. He's doing good. He's, he's midway hot. through. Great. Um, you know what? I'm going to have to go with Anshi. I love the, he's got that like chiseled jawline and I kind of like the kind of like bro -y look in his shorts with just his cock out. That looks like a great cock. I, I mean. What's his name again? I'm see what's on the other side. Anchi. Am I, am I reading it right? I think, yeah, absolutely. He's doing really well on that too. And so, yeah. yeah. Or, Did you look at the results, Cody? I haven't, I, yeah. I looked at, who's in the top? I, is it Malik Delgatti or is it Anshi? Report yeah. on the that while I read a couple of uh, Bryce says Eric Ray for me. That was mine. Thank you so much. Teddy says yours, Tommy Anshi, <laughs> if, if that's how we're pronouncing it um, as well. Doug says I was kind of hard this week. All of their rooms were clean. Oh, right. right. Thank Doug's you. Doug's all clean rooms. <laughs> <laughs> but Eric Ray and Anshi, oh, like what we picked. Okay, yeah. hey, Bryce says, so many of these dudes look the same, laughing out loud. Okay, Bryce. <laughs> Little shade there. Shade. Um, uh, <laughs> Cody, we like the shade. So XO Cowboy is in the, in the lead right now. And he's hot. It's, he's cute. I, I wouldn't kick him out of bed. How about that? I wouldn't I kick any it. of these guys out of bed, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So much fun playing along with you. Thank you, Tommy. I can't wait to meet you in person. It's going to be so great. Oh my God. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. So, I'm so excited to meet you guys in person, too. We're going to have way too much fun on that trip. Right? Yes. <laughs> people who want to follow you, um, is one of the best places to follow you on Instagram at surferjock805. Or yeah, you list some more. Name. That is my username on all platforms. TikTok, Instagram, OnlyFans, SurferJock805. So, yeah, if you want to follow me, check it out. Uh, no worries if not. I mean, <laughs> you can't unsee some things, okay? So... <laughs> I love it. Well, it's still going to be so much fun. Yeah, Thank you so much. And Thank you guys. We'll connect Appreciate in person. You Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You guys seem wonderful. All right. Thank so, you. Thanks. Thanks. And we'll give you this feed so you can promote it on your own. So oh. thank you. Oh, you already moved I around. put him when in the wing you, already. Give us a thumbs up. <laughs> and Cody, you can always follow my co-host Cody. He's a life coach. Follow him at Mr. Maurice on Instagram or follow him on his personal account on Instagram at at, did I say that right? Mr. Maurice, yes. Mr. Mr. Maurice. Maurice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you got a little like lost. You got there. it. Yeah. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram, I am underscore Steve V, or go to the website tagspodcast.com. And we're back all Oktoberfest with new interviews. So stay tuned for us. And we can't wait for everything coming forward. Don't forget our brand new show. Of a Certain Age drops Wednesday, October 18th, Of a Certain Age. And the best way to keep up to date with this is follow our Instagram account where we're going to start with all of the behind the scenes and everything. Go to Of a Certain Age Pod, P-O-D, Of a Certain Age Pod on Instagram. Cody, so exciting. So amazing. This show, I love it. And I'm so excited to go to the Bakai Resort. I can't wait. And in the meantime, continue having hot, hot gay, gay sex. sex.